slightly more interactive. Uh, I can almost see you here. Um, how many of you have used a generative AI tool or an application during the last year? Hands up. That's everyone. How many of you got value out of that tool? So it did what you wanted it to do? Pretty much everyone. How many of you had problems with the output? So it actually maybe generated wrong results, incorrect results, or hallucinations, as they are called. And that is everyone again, as I expected. Thank you. So generative AI using artificial intelligence to generate new and original content. Um, it's a fascinating um, area. And as you can see, it can be used for generating things like chat replies, poems written in the style of a pirate, or even deep fake videos. So, Interesting, powerful technology, but it is also quite easy to get it wrong. And yeah. Have a look at this timeline. As you can see at WeSecure, we have been applying AI to cybersecurity for decades. For us, AI is a tool to solve a certain problem, not a technology to use just for the sake of using it. That was also the mindset when we started exploring generative AI and large language models. We started not from the technology, but from the problem to solve. Where is the customer value? We kept challenging ourselves. That approach ultimately resulted in Luminan, the Weave Secure AI experience, and also the world's first cyberpunk all AI assistant. We refer to Luminan as an experience because it is more than a tool. Our vision is that Luminan evolves into a whole new layer of contextual experience all across elements. When we started designing Luminan, we quickly zoomed in on simplification as the main theme. Because let's face it, cybersecurity is complex, and it very easily leads to an information overload. We also wanted our Gen AI to feel like a natural extension of the existing functionality of elements and part of the same workflow. To keep things simple, we create and maintain the prompts so that you can focus on the task at hand. With pre-made and continuously tested prompts and context data, we can keep the hallucinations to a minimum. And by doing that, we tackle the safety angle as well. By limiting the interactions, between the user and the model, we can better isolate the data and make sure that none of your data, none of your company data, is being used to train any of the foundational models. That method also eliminates the risk of leaking the data by the model from another company, either accidentally or intentionally through malicious prompt engineering. And lastly, sustainability is very important to us. When we started working on Gen AI, we put a lot of effort to make sure that we use it in a resource efficient way. To be more specific, most of the computation happens outside of the model, working for the context data. And we make sure to use Gen AI only where it brings value over any other computational method. Thank you. So, Luminan is always easily accessible through that toolbar that you can see over there. And that brings us also to the first skill of Luminan, which is what we call then the um, security awareness assistant. So this is where we summarize the activity inside an organization during the last seven days and generate a situational awareness report. That report consists of the main findings that we found, along with some recommended actions that you can take to combat these issues, as well as a um, executed summary at the end. As you can see, there are also some links there in the report that I'll get back to shortly. This report is based on the element's security events. So instead of having to go through potentially hundreds of events one by one, you can just create this report to get an idea of where you should start looking first and then address the issues. The, the links, as you can see, you can have a link to a device. So if you click that device, it will zoom in on the security events for that particular device. Um, and also, this report can be generated in uh, the language that you have specified in the Element Security Center. So if you have the portal using, for example, Italian or Japanese, 
this report will also be in Italian or Japanese. As you can see in that screenshot there, there is a um, incident ID. In this case, the first finding is a, uh, let's see what it says. It's a severe lateral movement incident. So that is indeed something severe. So if you click that ID, it brings us to the next part of Luminum, which is the incident assistant. So this is where we explain and summarize so-called broad context detections. They are created by our XDR offerings. And they can be also quite complex, because they consist of many different detections bundled into one. And it can be hard to get an overview easily. So by clicking that button there, creating a summary, you will get a human understandable explanation of what actually happened inside that incident. There will be an executed summary. And at the end, there will also be a timeline of the main events that were involved in creating this incident. And same thing here. If you use the security center in a different language, you will have this report in your language as well. So as we saw from here, these screenshots, a typical use case might be that you first log in, you create a summary, uh, the executive summary of the overall activity in your organization. That's one click. You zoom in on an incident by clicking a second link. And then you generate an explanation of that incident with a third click. Three clicks less than a minute to do all of that. That is quite impressive. How do you then get access to this OWL called Luminen? Um, we're in pilot mode already now. So you can scan that QR code. You will go get uh, to a form where you can fill in your details. And we will then shortly send you instructions on how to enable it. You can enable it straight away already today. As soon as Leszek gets off the stage, he will happily send you the information. I can maybe leave this open here for a little while, or you can actually just visit us in the booth and you can scan the QR code from there. So is that it then for Luminen? Obviously not. Um, as Leszek said, we'd like to think of this as a more of an experience. It's not a tool, it's not a feature, and there are plenty of areas that we can go next. Um, we have been thinking, we've gotten a lot of feedback also about, for example, threat intelligence that Tim just talked about. That's a natural area where we want to expand. So instead of just saying that we blocked a particular website or we blocked a particular threat or an object, we can tell you more about the object itself. Why did we block it? Where have we seen this object before, et cetera? So that's clearly one area. Uh, another one which is very important for many of you is automatic reporting. So instead of clicking this manually, you could get the report every, every seven days, every month, for example, of what's been happening in a natural human language. And I think that's all the time that we had for this. Uh, we'll be happy to talk more about Luminen and uh, you hear about your ideas as well. Just come down to our booth and, yeah, let's talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for the exciting introduction. And as mentioned, please visit the booth and ask questions. Also nice to see the egg in the maze and check it out, it's really fun. Um, and then we move forward to the next speaker. Uh, that's Donato Capitella, principal security consultant. And he maybe answers the question, should you trust ChatGPT with your browser? Please welcome him to the stage. <laughs> 